Well, that was weird. It didn't pick up my microphone again. It did the same thing yesterday for some reason. Interesting. Sorry about that. Uh, we are here on the 9th of September, 2020, to talk about everything that went down tonight on AEW Dynamite. And I felt like, honestly, tonight's show was just a show. It wasn't anything extra special or anything about tonight's Dynamite. It wasn't like something happened on the show where I was like, oh my god, everyone needs to see that. Well, kind of, kind of. There was one thing that was newsworthy, and it was the Miro um, debut. But other than that, there was nothing else on the show that was like, oh my god, you gotta watch. Outside of the Miro stuff, it was just a show. Plain and simple, just a show. It was kind of like when you're like three weeks off of a pay-per-view, but you've got like three or four till the next pay-per-view, so you're kind of in the middle of... We don't want to push too hard coming off that last or coming to the next pay-per-view, but we got nothing really from the last pay-per-view anymore. (coughs) It's kind of really how it felt. It was like restarting the next phase, I guess you could say. I mean, some stuff was built from the all-out pay-per-view, but not really much of anything. But with that, I want to thank you guys for joining me here tonight. Twitch.tv forward slash PW Unlimited. Remember, guys, you can support us here on Twitch a couple of different ways, either by giving us a bits donation or or you can support us by becoming a subscriber here on Twitch. You can subscribe a couple of different ways, either with that tiered subscription or for free with Amazon Prime. Because if you have Amazon Prime, then you have Twitch Prime. No, you have Prime Gaming. I still got to remember that they changed that. It's called Prime Gaming now. And with Prime Gaming, or Amazon Prime, you get one free subscription to any Twitch channel that you want to support throughout the month, and I would greatly, greatly appreciate it if that one Twitch channel was us here at PW Unlimited. Seeing you guys in the chat right now. Uh, Jay Penix says, Poll, I'm actually typing it right now. Actually... Already setting up the poll because I want to know what you guys thought of tonight's AEW Dynamite. Just let a few more of you guys get in here on the live chat before we really get going. All right, the poll is live. Guys, go vote. Let me know what you thought of tonight's AEW Dynamite. I'm going to start that poll. Also, guys, remember, if you want to be part of tonight's show, you can do so by texting in to 510-906-1341. Again, that number is 510 906 1341. The number will be scrolling across the screen periodically, and I will put it in the live chat right now as well. Let's do that. Um, oh, no, not going to work. We might get it in the live chat, but the number will be scrolling right there across the screen periodically. <coughs> And let's get into talking about some AEW Dynamite. The show kicked off with tag team action. It was the Lucha Express. No, Jungle Express. I don't know why I always mess that up. It was the Jungle Express against the Lucha Bros with Eddie Kingston, the Butcher, and the Blade in their corner. I thought this was a fun opening match. Jungle Boy and Phoenix began the match with a hot sequence. Jungle Boy hit a suicide dive. Jungle Boy tried to use Luchasaurus as a launch pad, but slipped. The announcers cited the heat as a reason for the botch. Now, I don't know if it was hot today. I know it was really hot and humid back on Saturday for All Out, but I don't know if you can use that same excuse today or not. Jungle Boy got cut off and worked uh, and worked over. There were two separate heat segments on Jungle Boy. Luchasaurus got the hot tag and ran wild with chops and kicks to both men. Luchasaurus made a tag to Jungle Boy, but Pentagon and Phoenix hit their package pile driver stomp combo and Jungle Boy kicked out. The finish of the match 
saw Phoenix come off the top with a flying attack. Jungle Boy then moved out of the way and Phoenix hit Pentagon. Jungle Boy rolled up Pentagon and picked up the victory. So, so the Jurassic Express, Luchasaurus, and Jungle Boy do pick up the victory here tonight on Dynamite. I thought the match was very solid. Other than that one little botch, I didn't think anything else was bad in this match. <clears throat> well, after the match, they teased dissension of the brothers, the Lucha Bros. The Butcher, the Blade, and Eddie Kingston had to pull them apart. Kingston then cut a very, very strong promo. He was saying that they're all friends, they're all family, and they need to get along. They have each other's backs. He said, where's that British friend of yours? He's not here, I'm here. Talking about Pac. Um, everyone made up, and Kingston closed the promo by saying he was never eliminated from the Casino Battle Royale. Read the rules if you don't believe me. Now, I don't know exactly what he means, unless... Unless you're supposed to be thrown over the top rope and he wasn't thrown over the top rope because he was eliminated off the apron. And so, you know, thinking about it, he was eliminated off the apron. There is a chance that he wasn't thrown over the top rope to the apron, but he came out to get to Archer. I don't know. I'd have to watch it back. I, I've been thinking about it ever since he made that comment, but I haven't watched it back to see exactly what he means by, hey, I was never eliminated. Check the rules You'll if you don't believe me. Also, I'm dumb. I forgot what officially actually opened up tonight's show. So tonight's show actually started with Tony Schiavone in the parking lot. Two SUVs pull up behind Tony, and he says, Jericho and MJF are here. So as he does, Jericho and MJF get out of their cars. They walk up to where Tony is, and they look at each other. Jericho at one point does state, you know, MJF, you're going to get that world championship soon. Mark my words, or something along those lines. <coughs> MJF then told Jericho, yeah, and you're going to get your world championship back eventually. I guarantee it. Something like that. And then the two guys walk off their separate ways. We get a split screen. Jericho on the left, MJF on the right. And at the same time, they both go, idiot. Or something like that. I think it was idiot. Something like that. Something similar to that. And the interesting thing here is that Jericho said after All Out on his Saturday Night Special show on YouTube, he said this Wednesday... You will see what my next program is going to be. Does that mean that his next program is working with MJF? Are we going to get an actual MJF Jericho feud? I don't know. Because Jericho and Hager, from what the announcer stated, are now an official tag team trying to rank up in the tag team uh, ranks. So the announcers then... Showed some highlights from Moxley versus MJF at All Out. They pushed that the pay-per-view replay is available for purchase. And they really pushed that hard multiple times tonight. Like, hey, please go get the replay of the pay-per-view. And that leads me to believe that there may have been... Uh, how, how do I phrase this? For them to push the replay of this pay-per-view so hard, like, please go purchase the replay... You can see the women's world title match. You can see the world title match. You can see the Mimosa Mayhem match. Leads me to believe that this may have done the least amount of views of, of any of their pay-per-views to date, maybe. I don't know that for sure because we haven't gotten a number. <clears throat> but I don't remember them pushing this hard on the Fallout show. You know, the show after the pay-per-view. Hey, go get the replay. Hey, go get the replay. Hey, go get the replay. So that does lead me to believe that maybe it didn't do the numbers they were hoping or it just didn't live up to what their previous pay-per-views have done. I don't know. We're all waiting to see if AEW or any of these, um, what's it called, pay-per-view companies or even BR Live puts out a number. Lance Archer and Jake Roberts cut a promo on Moxley 
from an alley where it was raining. I have no clue where they were for it to be raining like this. Robert said that they were getting wet and enjoying it. Um, he said that they were going to make Moxley pee himself. And I'm like, what? You're going to make Moxley pee himself? I think they actually let Jake go out here and say whatever he wants. Because half the time it doesn't make sense. Archer said Moxley has been the champ for far too long and he's sick of it. And here's my thing. I know they'll never mention New Japan Pro Wrestling. But just nine months ago, John Moxley defeated Lance Archer with a title on the line. I know they'll never reference it. They'll never make note, oh, this is something that happened between these two. Moxley won before. I don't think they'll ever mention, a, um, not AEW, they are AEW, but mention New Japan. But it's like, eh, okay. I'm not too interested in Moxley versus Archer, to be completely honest. It's like, like I said, yeah, I haven't seen it in AEW yet. But I've kind of already seen it. Not kind of. I did already see it this year. So Matt Hardy came out to cut a promo. Basically give an update on his health. He said it was great to be in front of a live audience. And thanked everyone also watching at home. He said that he took a scary fall at All Out. And was grateful for the amazing outpour of support and love from the fans. He said after a myriad of tweets. Uh, of tests. Sorry I read that wrong. Of tests. He's expected to make a 100% full recovery. And boom, stop right there. Stop right there. What did Tony Khan say? Matt didn't suffer a concussion. Matt's going to be all right. What did his wife say? 1,000% Matt suffered a concussion. Well, if you didn't suffer a concussion, then what do you need to recover from? That's my, my one big thing. If you didn't suffer a concussion... What do you need to be recovering from? Matt stated that he's going to recover and be 100%. He's going to have to go home, but he will return to the ring. Again, that's concussion all the way. I'm, 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 if I had to side with one, I'm siding with Rebby. And Rebby was in the crowd and did not look happy to be there. She was giving Matt those, come on, Matt. Don't just don't kind of eyes like she was not happy. She was there with their newest baby. Matt said the other kids were still uh, back at home, probably watching on television. Matt pointed out the shirt he was wearing and said, I don't die. He said he might be the dumbest man alive, but he's for sure the luckiest. He pointed out his family and his children are what keep him going. He apologized to the fans for the match it all out and not being able to actually give the fans what they wanted. He said, maybe it's for the best because in this feud with Sammy, somebody was going to really, really get hurt as this was going to keep ramping up. Matt said that once he's cleared, he's going to get ranked and try to go for his first AEW championship. He said his journey is far from over and the fans are the best. I thought it was a good promo, but why does Matt have to get cleared? Why has Matt got to recover if he didn't suffer a concussion, Tony Khan. I'm going to have to side with the wife on this one. Matt was knocked out for at least 40 to 45 seconds before the doctor checked on him, before he started moving after slamming his head on the concrete. And I'm just going to say right now, if somebody's out for two seconds, uh, one second, if somebody is unresponsive for more than a second, you stop that match. Because Matt could barely walk. Sammy, at first, had to help Matt to his feet and help Matt stay on his feet. Then when they were climbing up that, that scaffolding or that trust or whatever you want to call it, Sammy was basically guiding Matt up there. And Matt had that stare in his eye. Like, I would not be surprised if Sammy helped Matt climb up there and then said, punch me. And Matt went, because the punch from Matt was not even like a normal punch. It was kind of just like a, I gotcha kind of deal. Like, he could throw the punch, but it, was kinda, it wasn't kind of. it was like a, okay, this is my spot. I got to hit it now. So, 
I know you've probably heard it from every other podcaster and YouTuber all week. AEW messed up. AEW fucked up. They should have just ended the match regardless of any stipulations or what the match actually was. But uh, from hearing this promo tonight, I can't in good conscience say that Tony Khan was in the right here. Because he said, no, we don't believe Matt suffered a concussion. Matt was taken to the hospital for further tests just to be safe but he did not suffer a concussion. Then what is he recovering from? A skull fracture or something? No, a freaking concussion. Next up, we had Orange Cassidy versus Angelico. There was basically nothing here except for Orange Cassidy getting a win over Angelico. Angelico worked over Cassidy's legs with a variety of holds. Cassidy made a quick comeback, hit a suicide dive, and a high cross off the top for a near fall. Cassidy then hit the orange punch and picked up the victory. Literally, that's everything that happened in this match. Santana and Ortiz ran in and attacked Orange Cassidy after the match. Trent and Chuck ran in to make the save. Trent and Chuck then challenged the Santana and Ortiz to a parking lot fight next week, and that was announced. We will be getting a parking lot brawl between these two teams next week. Glocks Marvez is at the Young Bucks locker room saying he wants to get a word. He knocks on the door. Da, da, da. Nothing. He's kind of looking at the camera like, um, he knocks again. Doc, doc, doc. Nothing. Finally goes to knock a third time. Knock, knock. Young Bucks open the door, look pissed, and super kick Alex. Marvez takes a bump, and that's it. And then in commentary, they're kind of just like, well, don't know what that was all about, folks. But if we hear anything further, we'll let you know. So then... We have the only newsworthy thing on tonight's show. So Tony Schiavone is in the ring and he introduces Kip Sabian. Sabian comes out and says, well, plugs his, well, first off, he plugs his Twitch. He says, everyone needs to come see me. Twitch.tv forward slash the Kip Sabian. I've been getting messages everywhere, especially on my Twitch. Who's going to be the best man? Who's going to be the best man? Can I be your best man? Sabian then said, I don't need you here, Tony. Or actually said, I don't, he said, what are you doing here? And Tony said, well, I'm going to help you on, uh, you know, reveal who your best man is. And he was like, if I needed your help, I would have asked for it, Timmy. And I'm like, okay, that was, that was dumb. So he says, I'm here to announce my best man. And not just the best man, but the best man. Here he is. And he points to one side of the entranceway. But out of the other side of the entranceway comes a big man. In a Hawaiian t-shirt. And Kip runs out of the ring and goes, whoa, 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 And I forget what he calls this guy, but he calls him some name. He goes, what are, you, what, what, what are you doing here? He's like, you told me I'm the best. So I assumed I'm the best man. He's like, no. You subscribed to my channel. So I said, you're the best for subscribing. And he was like, oh. And then he like knocks the guy out or whatever and says, but don't forget to resubscribe next month. So he gets back in the ring and he says something about his Twitch again. He goes, now here's the real best man. And then out the other side again comes somebody else, and this time it's Brian Pillman Jr. Brian jumps in the ring, and Kip's like, what are you doing here? And he's like, you texted me earlier. You said I'm the best, man. And Kip was like, no, I texted you on your birthday and just said, you're the best, comma, man. We're not even friends. I don't know what you're doing out here. Plugs the switch one more time and says, okay, okay. Now, the best man is. And we hear some music play, and it says, The Best Man, Miro. And now would come Guido-looking, Slim Shady-looking, old Miro, the former Rusev. He would make his way way down to the ring and hug Kip Sabian before taking the mic. Let me get the exact quote here. Um, why can't I find it anymore? Oh, here we go. Here we go. So, Miro takes the mic and literally says, and I quote. Why? I just, hold on one, guys. Like, I've, I've, this happened to me before. I use Google Docs to... Write my notes, and it froze up on me again. Give me one second. Here we go. All right. He said, and I quote, 
10 years in the same house under the same glass ceiling with an imaginary brass ring. Well, you can take that brass ring and shove it up your ass. And my first thought was, oh, he's X-Pac. After Eric Bischoff FedExed him his fired papers and he went back to WWF and joined the DX. Exactly what it was. He's X-Pac, sour over being fired, and now wanting to just shit all over the company. And then he said something about, hey, if you follow me on Twitch, you know I'm the best. I'm the best gamer. I'm the best everything. I'm the best man. And I'm like, okay, cool. This entire segment was to rip on WWE because here's a couple of things to think about. A, they mentioned Twitch way too many times. B, hold on, hold on. You want to say it froze up on me again, guys. Got to refresh. All right, so A, they mentioned Twitch way too many times. B, he had to crap on WWE about the whole brass ring thing because Vince said that once before. And I don't know how many of you guys realize this, but this was a wedding-related segment. What was the last big thing that Rusev was doing in WWE? It all had to do with freaking Lana marrying and, you know, doing the whole stuff with Bobby Lashley. There's too many parallels here to unpack. The brass ring thing in WWE, the glass ceiling in the brass ring, the stuff Vince has always said. The Twitch stuff. Well, that's making fun of WWE because at one point we thought they weren't allowing their wrestlers to do Twitch. They are. You just got to do it a specific way. And then the wedding stuff. The last big thing he did in WWE was about a wedding. So, I don't fucking know, guys. I'm kind of tired of it. I get it. He's upset. He's mad. He was released. But when you get, when you watch an AEW show, you can't watch a show without them taking some sort of a jab at WWE, whether that's Dynamite, a pay-per-view, or BTE. But Miro is officially signed to AEW. He said Elite knows Elite, and Miro is all Elite. And then AEW took to Twitter immediately and posted an image saying that Miro is all Elite, which means that he is signed with the company. So he's here to stay, guys. Miro is here to stay. Going forward, Tony Schiavone interviewed the Hangman. Hangman Page had a glass of whiskey in his hand. Schiavone asked how Page was doing. Page gave a stock answer. Schiavone pressed him for some more honest answers. Page said that it felt inevitable that he and Kenny Omega would split it all out, but it didn't have to be that way. He said it was his fault that FTR were in the position to challenge them for the titles and made a mistake. And in thinking that, because, well, look what he did. He said, I messed up. Page said that he, had, that he and Kenny had a problem, but a, had problems, but a lot of wins. He said not having the titles is a challenge, but they'll climb back to the top. So they're presenting this like, Page still thinks they're a team and will eventually get a rematch for the titles. So we'll see where that goes because as we saw later, Kenny does not want to be a team anymore. So next up, we had Chris Jericho and Jake Hager versus Joey Janela and Sonny Kiss in a no disqualification match. And this was weird. Last week, Jericho just quickly destroyed Joey Janela. But all of a sudden this week, Joey Janela got a fire lit up his ass because he did not let Jericho just destroy him. Janela uh, scored some offense very early. Janela pulled a chair out from under the ring and used it. He set it up at one point and did his own poetry in motion type deal, jumping off the chair, launching himself into Jericho in the corner. But Jericho blocked it and hit a suplex onto the leg of the chairs. Janela was cut off. And working, uh, was cut off and working over, worked over during the break. Sonny Kiss got a tag, which it's no DQ, so I don't get why you need to tag in and out. It, I don't know if it's just a WWE thing, but 99% of the time when you see a no DQ tag team match, it's usually also tornado tag. But Sonny Kiss got a tag and made a comeback after the commercial. Hager set up a table on the floor. 
Hager and Jericho threw Janela off the stage through the table. Kiss hit a dive on the uh, hit a dive to the stage off the stage to both men. Kiss went to the top rope and Jericho sprayed Kiss with a fire extinguisher. Hager hit Kiss with a Uranagi and pinned him. Pick up or no, didn't pin him. Yeah, and pinned him with a head and arm choke on as well. So yeah, Jericho and Hager pick up the victory. And later in the night, they said Jericho and Hager are going to have another tag team match next week as they look to rise the ranks in the AEW tag team division. So maybe eventually Jericho and, and Hager challenge FTR or something. Jericho cut a promo afterwards. He said All Out was terrible. Uh, give me one second, guys. Okay. Jericho cut a promo afterwards and said All Out was terrible. It was a terrible night for the inner circle and his boots still smell like rotten orange and Sammy is home injured. Jericho said it's time to turn it all around and he and Hager want the tag titles. MJF cut a promo backstage from his campaign headquarters. He said Moxley cheated it all out, but he doesn't blame him because it's all in it. That makes no sense the way I wrote this. He said Moxley cheated it all out but he doesn't blame him because it's all in good nature. MJF said that the campaign staff is to blame and they're all fired. MJF then turned to Wardlow. MJF said they shouldn't have a problem because he signs Wardlow's checks, not Tony Khan, but Wardlow just needs to listen to him. MJ asked, MJF said, are we going to have a problem? And Wardlow was just like, uh, no. He's like, good, because if we do, I can put you and your family out on the street. MJF said, now is not time for aggression. It's time to plan how to get back to the top. This is all right. I thought it was effective, though. Uh, Moxley cut a promo. He said, as if he didn't have enough on his plate already, he saw the corner of his eye, Lance Archer won that Battle Royal Saturday. Moxley said, it doesn't get any easier from here with Archer, though. He said, Archer's a monster. But we need to ask ourselves, why would you really be against Moxley right now? Basically, Moxley said, I'm white hot. Why would anybody want to challenge me? So Tully Blanchard and FTR, Fear the Revolution, I think is what they call No, Fear the Revelation is what they're called. We're in the ring for a celebration. The ring was surrounded by all the different tag teams in AEW. <clears throat> Tully put over FTR as the best tag team in the world. Cash said that they are undefeated, but they had to fight their way to the top. Cash pointed out that SCU, wait, Cash pointed out SCU and said, imagine the match they could have if SCU were in their prime. Dax cut a promo and said they're now the locker room leaders. Dax pointed out Jurassic Express and said that they got a non-title match with them next week. Jurassic Express jumped in the ring to face off with FTR. FTR begged off though. He threw some alcohol in Luchasaurus's face, and yeah. FTR rolled to the outside. Uh, give me one second. I have a message I might need to read. Okay, never mind. FTR rolled to the outside. Jurassic Express dumped a cooler of ice on them. The remaining teams cut cake slices, and there we go. FTR and Tolly left. Going forward, Taz joined commentary. We thought um, Darby Allen was coming out, but nope, Ricky Starks came out. Stark mocked Allen for getting hurt all the time and said next time Allen shows up, absolute Ricky Starks is going to absolutely kick his ass. That promo was good. It just furthers this without having to have Darby on the show, and I wonder if Darby is actually hurt again or not. Next up, we got Nyla Rose versus Ty Conti. Ty Conti. Conti was nearly in tears as she entered the ring because this morning it was announced that she has officially been signed by AEW. The match was a little bit clunky and not the best. Conti tried a rolling knee bar. Rose fought free and hit a splash in the corner. Vicky Guerrero interfered and raked the eyes of Conti as the referee did not see it. They fought on the floor. Conti set Rose into the barricade and posted her. Conti hit a second rope crossbody for a near fall during the break. 
Conti tried to springboard Sunset Flip, but Rose blocked it. Rose teased a Beast Bomb. Conti blocked and used a Triangle Choke. Rose used a Beast Bomb to escape the choke and pinned Conti. The announcer started talking about... Uh, basically, the, the match ended, and there was just nothing else. I think... Oh, no, no, no. Whoa. I missed a whole thing here that I didn't write down. Okay. I digress. I take this back. So Conti gets, just gets beat. And then Nyla goes to beat her down some more after the match when Hikaru Shida comes out with the kendo stick and basically warns off Nyla Rose. So, hey, it looks like Nyla might be the next challenger for the AEW Women's World Championship. Then, the announcers started talking about the Young Bucks. They said Tony Khan has fined the Young Bucks $5,000 each for super kicking Marvez. Also, they said that after Dynamite tonight, sometime after Dynamite, we will be getting an announcement from Cody. We know that that announcement is an America's Got Talent ripoff on TBS that Cody will be the, one of the judges on, along with Jennifer Nettles of Sugarland, along with Snoop Dogg, and one other person I can't remember at this time. But that took up the last two minutes of, of um, Dynamite. They announced... Cody's on a new show called Going Big Show, Go Big Show, or something like that. It's a basically talent show that they are doing in quarantine times on at a um, what's it called drive-in with drive-in th- drive-in fans. Well, the announcer said that the Bucks had been fined, and Jr. threw it to an interview he did with Kenny Omega earlier in the day. I think JR is really good here when he's interviewing people just straight head on, face to face. I think JR does it really well. Better than commentating, to be honest. So, Mega said, winning and losing titles, that's what happens when you're a pro wrestler. He said, there's no rec- reconciliation, though, in the plans for him and, him, him and Paige. He said, it's time to be the ace that he thought he would be and be the single star that everybody wanted him to be when he came to AEW. He said that Paige may think that we can get back together and he may reconcile with the Bucks, but I'm not for that anymore. I've got other plans in mind. I thought this was really, really good and it's growing the Kenny Omega character now because he said basically I wasted almost a year on this, on this team and on this division. I was like, damn, okay. It was then announced that on October 14th, This episode of Dynamite will be the Dynamite Anniversary Show, the one-year anniversary of Dynamite. And on that show, Moxley will be defending the AEW World Championship against Lance Archer. We then got the lineup for next week. Best Friends versus Santana and Ortiz in a parking lot fight. FTR versus Jurassic Express in a non-title match. Thunder Rosa versus Eva Lise with the NWA Women's title on the line. Jericho and Hager versus Private Party. Hangman versus... And Hangman versus Frankie Kazarian. We then go to our main event. It was Mr. Brody Lee versus Dustin Rhodes with the TNT title on the line. And my one criticism is is this. So, Dustin... Goes back and forth, no problem with Brody Lee. And in doing so, it's like, well, Cody got squashed immediately. Cody got seven to eight, ten seconds of offense and then nothing else against Brody Lee. But Dustin, his very much older brother, can hang with Brody Lee. Now I know what you're going to say. I know what you're going to say. Well, Cody was tired from all those matches he had had week after week after week. Okay, it's not like he's wrestling night after night after night. He's got a match, and then a week to recover. And then a match, and a week to recover. And he even did some tag matches in there too. He at least one, the one with Cardona. So it's like, I don't, I don't buy that. Like Cody tired himself out, and that's why Mr. Brody Lee was able to destroy him the way he did. No. <laughs> Dustin coming out here and just going 50-50 in this match with Brody Lee really didn't make Brody Lee come off as the monster that we saw in that Cody match that we thought we were going to be getting going forward as the TNT champion. Because really, Brody Lee should be coming out here and just squashing guys for the next month or so. 
until there's somebody built up enough as a challenger. Not just, oh, you won a tag team match at the pay-per-view, now you get a title shot. Rose attacked Lee during the introductions, and they brawled around ringside with Rose maintain, Rhodes maintaining the upper hand. They made it to uh, get back. They managed to get back into the ring where Lee turned the tides. He had some chops on Dustin. They traded chops back and forth. Lee hit some palm strikes. Lee hit a slingshot into the ropes and had the advantage before the uh, final commercial. Rhodes started his comeback after the break. He hit a bulldog and a hurricane rana and a destroyer for a two count. Dustin hit a crossroads and got a two off of it. Lee came back with a power bomb but missed a big boot. Silver took the ref, and Dustin hit the unnatural kick. So Excalibur goes, oh, man, the unnatural kick. And fucking JR goes, oh, you mean a low blow? Literally. Like, are you kidding me? Freaking Excalibur tries to sell us like it's a cool Dustin Rhodes move. The unnatural kick. And literally, he says, oh, the unnatural kick by Dustin Rhodes. And JR immediately goes, oh, you mean a low blow? I'm like, fucking A. Rhodes then dispatched Silver with a power slam. Dustin hit a power driver on Lee and got another near fall. Dustin avoided a boss man slam. Lee lock, uh, blocked a strike and hit his discus lariat to pin Dustin Rhodes and retain the title. Afterwards, Dark Order came down to the ring and they had QT Marshall's lifeless body with them. Lee kicked Cabana out of the ring, still upset after losing it all out. Lee then kicked Dustin with a low blow, and the announcer said, well, now we have breaking news from Cody. So I thought maybe it was going to be like, oh, you want to you wanna still attack the Nightmare family? Mr. Brody Lee, you think you're better? Well, I'm recovered and I'm coming for you. I thought it was going to be something like that, or, or I'm going to be cleared by August 4, October 14th, the anniversary show. We're going to do our rematch. I thought it was going to be something like that. No, instead, Cody goes, we've been filming some stuff here in Georgia during quarantine times. Let me kick it to the host of the Go Big Show, Brent Kershich, or whatever the guy's name is. And I'm like, we're, getting, we're wasting the last two minutes of dynamite for this? Oh, that's bullshit. Got Jennifer Nettles, Snoop Dogg, and uh, I can't remember the other girl's name. I think it was Rosario Dawson, maybe? I don't remember exactly. But it was just like AEW. He literally said AEW, breaking news. And then it was just this from Cody. I thought Cody was announcing like the second TNT show they're supposed to be starting. No. It was this. Random ass America's Got Talent rehashing whatever where people can come out and do whatever they want for this talent competition. And that also includes driving monster trucks. The hell? Well, yeah, that's how Dynamite ended. With Cody and this dude, Brett Krishner or something like that, announcing some talent show on TBS. And that was Dynamite, folks. But with that, our poll did subside a while back, and you guys thought, well, Dynamite was just all right. 78% of you said Dynamite was just all right. 11% said I liked it, and another 11% said I didn't like it. But now if you want to be part of the show, you can do so by texting in to 510-906-1341. The first text message here does state, I thought Miro was retired from pro wrestling and was now a full-time professional Twitch streamer. Well, he's not a full-time Twitch streamer because he doesn't stream every day. A full-time Twitch streamer streams at least five days a week. So we know he's not a full-time Twitch streamer because he already dialed that back. But uh, the whole I'm retired thing was a swerve just for people, for, so people wouldn't stop. Because everyone kept asking him on stream, hey, are you going to AW? Hey, are you going to New Japan? Hey, are you going to Impact? What are you doing next? What are you doing next? And so he said that just to get people to stop saying it or asking in this Twitch chat. And the person here says, Kip Sabian actually said, if I wanted anyone here, it would be Junior or JR because he knows how to have a good time. Yeah, I know he said that, but I found that as a whatever line, so I didn't even write it down. I thought that was just a whatever line. I didn't get it. If there's some hidden meaning to that, then I don't get it. And this final question here states, what is next for MJF? And, well, I don't know. They teased something with Jericho, but then later they seemed it seem like Jericho's doing something else. So I honestly don't know what's next for MJF. Um, but with that, 
Oh, we have one more text message here. Person says, do you still believe Kenny is turning heel and becoming the cleaner? Good chance. I mean, it may get dragged out, but there's a really good chance. But with that, I want to say thank you guys for joining me here tonight to talk about AEW Dynamite. Thank you for joining me here on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash pro wrestling unlimited. No, twitch.tv forward slash PW unlimited. You can follow us on YouTube, youtube.com forward slash pro wrestling unlimited. Follow us on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash pro wrestling ULTD. Follow us on Instagram by searching for at PW unlimited. No, Twitter at PW unlimited and follow us on Instagram pro wrestling unlimited. We'll be back live on Friday for the Friday Night Smackdown review. So with that, guys, have a great night, and we'll see you next time.